بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله I'd like to speak about something which is very important for us to understand and that is extremism or غلو and there's many different types of غلو and I would like to speak briefly about a couple of ways in which we can have uh, extremism, where we can fall into extremism. The first way is with regards to our worship. Uh, and this can be by being inconsistent in your worship, in your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or be going beyond the requirements. So, for example, being inconsistent meaning sometimes you pray uh, your sunnah of fajr, and then you also you leave it. Maybe you pray it once every few months. You you do for a week straight, and then you leave off the sunnah of fajr or your other nawafil prayers. So this is a way in which we can be inconsistent in our ibadah or inconsistent in praying witr or something like this. And we're talking about these are this is being inconsistent in the mustahabat in those things which are recommended. But we can also be inconsistent in the usul or the uh, the main aspects of ibadah, the wajibat. For example, someone who doesn't pray some, for the men not praying fajr in the masjid. Maybe, maybe the masjid is very close to them and they only pray sometimes in the masjid. This is inconsistent. Or, for example, the one who doesn't pray Fajr at all. They pray occasionally, uh, they pray the Fajr prayer during its time, but very they're very inconsistent. They're always, it's a regular habit for them to sleep in late. They don't use the means for waking themselves up, which could be the uh, an alarm clock, an alarm on their phone, on their iPad, because now we have the intishar or widespread use of uh, all kind of technology which will aid us in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one of the ways we can be inconsistent in our worship. And then as we said, going beyond the requirements. So for example, maybe a person, uh, you know, they're required to do certain acts of ibadah, but they want to practice the sunnah. But maybe there is no wisdom in their you their way that they're trying to implement the sunnah. For example, a good classic example that we've run into over many years, probably more recently, in the past ten to fifteen years, because our Sheikh Sheikh Mukhbil bin Hadi al Wadi Allah uh, used to allow prayer in shoes. When we prayed in Damaj, Damaj was a place, one of the only places on the earth that I've ever prayed in my shoes in a masjid. So that was okay for that because that whole village was students of knowledge. And they were all seeking knowledge and the Shaykh wanted to keep that sunnah so the people would practice the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before entering the masjid. They would check their shoes and they would dust their shoes and then they would go in the masjid and pray in their shoes. Many of the other ulama have uh, spoken about that, that that would not be something you would implement in Saudi Arabia because they spend a lot of money on rugs and so forth and, and so on, and there is no hikmah in, in, in doing so. Not that you should abandon the sunnah outright, but if it's a place where, for example, there's a, a expensive carpet in there, then that would not be from wisdom. And that, so leaving off that sunnah would not harm you in that uh, respect. But that would be from wisdom. So being excessive in insisting that you have to pray in shoes, for example, in the masajid in the UK or Britain or France or whatever, or ch uh, any other uh, place, that this would be being going beyond the requirements in a sense. It's practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is not excessive. But what is would be excessive is your insistence in a situation which is not applicable, so it's it's putting things in its wrong uh, in its wrong place in the in the wrong place, and this is not from wisdom, not from hikmah. The other type of glue I have to I want to talk about glue in creed in your 
uh, 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 aqidah. And this glue, for example, the jihadi takfiri, which would fit people like Daesh or ISIS or ISIL, whatever you want to call them, or Boko Haram or others, who have a jihadi takfiri creed. And when we say jihadi takfiri, this is not taken away from the merits of jihad. But this is saying that they are not implementing jihad fi sabilillah properly. So it's not fi sabilillah. And as the ulama in the past spoke about jihad fi sabili shaitan, that some of the people, they believed they were making jihad fi sabilillah, but in fact they were making jihad fi sabili shaitan. They were making jihad for the sake of shaitan because they were deceived by the shaitan and thinking that, that what they're doing good when they blow themselves in, in marketplaces, when they blow themselves up in the mes masajid, when they kill the innocents here, when they kill the Muslims here, when they blow themselves up and cut and decapitate the people, this has nothing to do with jihad fi sabilillah. So they have this, it's a part of their creed. It's not just their methodology, but it's a part of their creed. They believe they're going to paradise. They believe. They uh, they believe that they're doing the right thing. This is extremism. It's going uh, against and beyond Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, by making take fear of their brothers and sisters in Islam or anyone who disagrees with them, then this is also from Hulu and extremism. The second type of extremism in Crete is when we have those groups like Kabani and these others and uh, the other big Sufi from Hadramaut uh, who, who lives in the Emirates. He's a part of the government establishment there. Um, Jeffrey, who's the Sheikh of Hamza Yusuf, by the way, and others like this, they respect him, they invite him, they can uh, exalt him. These people call for extreme zuhud. You'll see them and you can find them on YouTube singing and beating their drums together and bobbing their heads and doing things like this as, as a form of ibadah. But in fact, this is not mishroor. This is not from kitab Allah, wala sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala minhaj salaf asali. So they are going beyond the bounds with this. Likewise, you'll see them criticizing Ahlul Sunnah and attacking Ahlul Sunnah. And this, of course, against goes against the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left for us, salawatul rabbi wa salamu alayhi. This is extreme zuhud. You know, they'll, they'll be doing all kind of uh, bid'ah which goes beyond the bounds of the religion. Also, seeking uh, support from the dead. They'll say, well, the, the dead and the living both have so, uh, spirits, or they both have a, a type of sacredness. So regardless of whether you're dead or whether you're alive, but to ask them, they all have this type of sacredness or this type of... Uh, uh, this type of honor that should be respected so that it's permissible to supplicate to the dead. This is a part of their argument. I've read this and studied this myself with some of the people like one of the big Sufi sheikhs of the Tariqah. Uh, I, I'm not recalling his name right now, but this is well known and you can look this up for yourself that this is a part of the Tariqah. So what we're saying here is they're making extremism in Creed. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about extremism, and this refers back to the worship, about going beyond the bounds. In the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the nafran min ashaba nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sa'alu azwaj nabi nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an amalihi fi sir. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that a person from amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about deeds, actions that he did in private, because that they would only know on those types of actions, because they live with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So some of them they said, not the, the, uh, the wives, but some of these people who were asking these questions, uh, or they were presenting this, they said, La atizawajanisa. I won't marry women. One, some, a, a group of them said, "I won't, we won't. I won't marry no women." And another, we call about whom? La akulillahum. And another group said, "We won't eat uh, meat. We'll refrain from eating meat." We call about whom? La anamu ala firash. And another group they said, "We won't sleep on beds." 
فَبَلَدَ نَبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ ذَلَكَ So this came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this news that some of the people were saying this, that they were going to refrain from eating meat. They were going to, some were saying that we're just going to be so pious, we're not going to marry women. Meaning that we're going to just be, devote ourselves only to worship and this and and secluding ourselves and being away from, we have no need for these desires, but we're just going to have our relationship with Allah. And another group said, we're not going to be, we're basically going to be vegetarian. So it shows us also that vegetarianism is not something that's necessarily praiseworthy in Islam. And uh, especially if you prohibit that from yourself. And another group said that they will not sleep on the beds. You know, they want to live, be, uh, live in difficulty, sleep on the earth, sleep on, you know, in a more difficult, they felt that this was from humility. So this came to the Prophet وسلم, this news. فَحَمِدَ Allah وَأَثْنَ عَلَيْهِ وَقَالَ So he, the Prophet وسلم, he responded by saying, he, he praised Allah. So this is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, before you speak, before you're going to give a lecture, before anything. He said, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى نَبِيَنَ مُحَمَّدِ So the Prophet وسلم, said, فَحَمِدَ Allah وَأَثْنَ عَلَيْهِ So the Prophet وسلم, he praised Allah and he, uh, you know, he, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying like, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah. Like this, you know, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waqal, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma bala aqwam qalu kada wa kada wa lakinni usalli wa awnam wa usum wa afthar wa tazawaj al-nisa fa man radiba an sunnati fa laysa minni. This is beautiful and this is a refutation of all these people who have these various types uh, fall into extremism. The Prophet said, said what uh, is the status of uh, a people who say such and such and such and such? He said, when I, however I myself, I pray and I sleep. So he reserves some time for resting his body. And this was a part of the ibadah. That he prayed, he prayed in the middle of the night, he prayed of course the wajibat, and he gave his body time to rest. And I, I fast and I break my fast. What is And I marry women. This is from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَنْ رَضِبَ عَنْ سُنَّةِ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever desires other than my Sunnah, then they are not from me. So, letting us know, حَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ That it's not based upon our desires. And it's not based upon being extreme and it's not based upon going beyond the bounds thinking we're doing good but in fact use wisdom and in fact suffice yourself with the sunnah of the Prophet and this leads to another point I want to make up that I want to point out and that is also being aware of being tisahim meaning too easy in affairs being too easy with the wajib Okay, being lazy, well, you know, it's time to pray, but you know, I can pray a little bit later, I can delay my prayer, whatever. Or being tisahal in how you deal with the people of innovation. So, there is a wisdom, there is fiqh that is involved with how you deal with people who have deviated in the religion. And callers to the innovation. That sometimes you may have to... Uh, you, you, you invite them, of course. This is what you want. This is what the maqsul is. You want to bring them away from bid'ah to sunnah. But there may come a time when you have to say, the, the point is, is that some of our brothers and sisters are tasahal, meaning that they leave off ever criticizing ahla bid'ah. And they sit with ahla bid'ah. And they cooperate with ahla bid'ah. And they lecture and travel with ahla bid'ah. So then they immerse themselves so much with Ahl Bidah, of course it has an effect on them and they are unable to speak out against their Bidah. So this is the danger. That's some of the danger that we have to be aware of being Tisahul. And also this extremism, these are the two things that it can lead to. So it can lead to being too easy, meaning that once if you go too extreme, you won't be consistent in your worship and you won't be able to maintain consistency. How many people Think of the example, if you have a chance to look on the YouTube, Morton Storm, his story, or his book, 
What happened? I know this individual. He became extreme. He became with the, the Tekfidi, Khawadis, Jihadis, and made so much noise until he left his religion. And this is what the, the Salaf used to mention about the one who's, who, who's always quick changing from Medhad to Medhad to Minhaj to Midhaj, Minhaj, position to position, that this person, you know, they're on the path of Zandaka. And this is what he did. He became Zindik. He left the religion of Islam. Likewise, you have some students who are so severe in criticizing one another, criticizing Baina Ahl Sunnah, Fitna, or criticizing even Ahl Bidah. That's, that's what they spend their time. They don't spend their time in strong worship. They don't spend their time doing beneficial, seeking beneficial knowledge. Al uh, Nafia, they don't go into Masail, they don't get into the Fiqh Fideen, they don't concern themselves with their manners and their morals and their akhlaq or anything, but instead all they do without gaining any knowledge is speak about individuals. And this is a very criminal thing if the person doesn't even have knowledge. So if the person is not even a student of knowledge, not even someone who someone who just relies upon translations, but yet they believe that they're uh, a professor in Jarwa Ta'deel, or they believe they're a professor in uh, speaking about uh, uh, criticizing individuals and praising individuals, or speaking about the Mukhalifin, those people who make mistakes, or those people who differ, but yet they don't read Surah Al Fatiha properly. Yet they don't uh, 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 pray properly. Yet they don't make dhikr ever. You, you know, this is the extremeness, this is extreme extremism, and, what, and these are real situations. And I want to end by this last uh, situation, a particular individual, I'm not sure if I ever had the chance to meet him, but it's well known, uh, he was an individual, he was a student of knowledge from America, and he was caught up in a lot of fitna, and he used to always go and see Sheikh Rabi. He used to travel from Medina, I think Sheikh Rabi was living in Mecca at the time, he used to always travel from there on the weekends to see the Sheikh and sit with him and benefit from his knowledge. And the Sheikh knew him. And after some years, the Sheikh asked about this individual, what happened to so-and-so? And the brother says, Sheikh, he changed his name, he no longer goes by that, he's no longer Muslim. And the Sheikh said, with his hikmah, he said, I thought this would happen to him because he was so, so extreme and so severe. So it shows us, Ahabat Tifilah, that we have to be balanced and that we have to have wisdom, we have to focus on those things which are most important and not involve ourselves in fitna, in trials and tribulations because I promise you, and I've seen this in my studies in Islam and in, in dealing with individuals and seeing different students of knowledge, I've seen so many who have gone from extreme to going to the other opposite. I, I recall one individual, he invited me for tea once in his home in Medina and he said to me, he said, Wallahi Khalid he said, if I would have known you one year ago, I would not have invited you. And I said, why? He said, because I was so severe back then. But alhamdulillah, I've changed. So that shows he's grown in his Islam. And we hope that we all continue to grow. And we'll leave off with that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And bless us with ilm and nafi, rizq and tayyib, wa amal al-mutaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.